This video is on the examples in the chapter on simultaneous equations. In the following questions give any numbers in your answers up to two decimal places. Up to means no decimal places, one decimal place or two decimal places. If your calculator gives you an answer up to six decimal places, I don't want six, I only want up to two. So that's no decimal places, one decimal place or two decimal places. Question one. Find the point of intersection of the following two lines. We've got 5y is equal to minus 3x plus 37 and we've got 3y is equal to 7x minus 13. Let's call this equation 1 and this one equation 2. So what we want to do is get the y's the same so then we can set the x's equal to each other. So that means I'm going to multiply the first equation by 3 so I'm going to get 15y is equal to minus 9x plus 111. I'll call that equation 3. And I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 5. So I'm going to get 15y is equal to uh, 35x minus 65. The left hand side of equation 3 is 15y and the left hand side of equation 4 is 15y which means that we can write 35x minus 65 is equal to 9x minus 111. Now I'm going to put all the x's on the left hand side and all the numbers on the right hand side. So I've got minus 9x here, which becomes plus 9x when I move it over. So 35, 44x, 44x is going to equal. Um, I've got minus 65 here, which becomes plus 65 when we move it over. So that's going to give us 160, 176. Let's just move this up a bit. So x is equal to 176 divided by 44. If I divide through by 2 I'm going to get um, 88 over 22 which is going to equal 4. Let's put this value of x into the first equation. 3 times 4 is 12 so 35 minus 12 is going to give us 25. 25 divided by 5 says that y equals 5. Now let's put it in the second equation as a sanity check. Um, 4 7s are 28. 28 minus 13 is going to give us 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we can be reasonably confident that that's correct. Let's put that into baseline. x is 4 and y is 5. Are we correct? Yes we are. Now questions 2, 3 and 4 are very similar to question 1 so I won't bother doing those. So we'll now move on to question 5. Find the points of intersection between this quadratic and this straight line. In this example we've got y is equal to the quadratic and y is also equal to a straight line. So we can write 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 13. Now I'm going to move all the terms onto the left hand side so we're going to get 2x squared plus 2x will become minus 2x on the left hand side so we're going to get minus 6x and plus 13 will become minus 13 on the left hand side so that's going to be minus 8 is equal to 0. Now there are two ways to solve quadratic equations in my view you either can see what the answer is or you use the equation so in this particular case the first thing I'm going to do is to divide through by 2 because 2 is a factor in all of the coefficients so we can say that x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0 and you can probably see that if we put an x in here and an x in here and a 4 and a 1 
because those are two of the factors of 4. If we multiply x by x, we get x squared. If we multiply x by 4, we'll get 4x, but we have minus 3x here, so let's put a minus sign in there and a plus sign in here. Now, as a sanity check, let's expand the brackets. We've got x times x, which will give us x squared. We've got x times minus 4, which will give us minus 4x. We've got x times 1, which will give us plus x, which means that they combine to give us minus 3x. And then we've got 1 times minus 4, which will give us minus 4. So our factorization is correct. So now we can say x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals minus 1. And we can say x minus 4 equals 0, so x is equal to 4. Now, when x equals minus 1, let's put it into the quadratic equation. So minus 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. When x is equal to minus 1, minus 4x becomes plus 4x, so that is um, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 5 is 11. So when x equals minus 1, y is equal to 11. And now we'll put the same value into the second equation as a sanity check. So 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 13 minus 2 is 11. So we can be confident in that answer. And now on the second one, we can put x equals 4 into the first equation. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. 4 times 4 is 16 and there's minus, so that's 32 minus 16, that's 16. 16 plus 5 is 21. And now we'll put it into the second equation. So 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 13 is 21. So we can be confident about that answer too. So let's put these into baseline. Minus 1 and 11 and 4 and 21. Are we right? Yes, we are. Okay, questions 6, 7 and 8 are very similar to questions 5, so I will ignore those and go on to question 9. A pirate boat is 20 kilometres away from you on a bearing of 135 degrees. Um, it's travelling at 20 kilometres an hour on a bearing of 45 degrees. Your boat can travel at 40 kilometres an hour what bearing do you need to set to catch the pirates in the shortest time? Let's imagine that you're here. This direction is north and bearings are always measured from the north. So a bearing of 135 degrees is a bearing like that. So the pirates are here and that's a distance of 20 kilometers. Now the pirates, now the pirates are traveling at a bearing of 45 degrees and they can travel at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour and you can travel at 40 kilometers per hour and you need to catch them somewhere here. One more line I'd like to add which is through there. This angle here is 45 degrees and this angle here is 45 degrees, which means we've got a rank right angle here. That's 20 and that's 40. So the sine of this angle is equal to 20 over 40. So let's say sine theta is equal to 20 over 40. So theta is equal to sine to the minus one of a half so theta is actually equal to 30 degrees. This angle was at a bearing of 135 degrees. This angle is 30 degrees, so the bearing we need to set is equal to 135 minus 30, and that's equal to 105 degrees. So we'll put that into baseline. 105, and are we right? Yes, we are. Let's start by identifying what we know. 
we've got the International Space Station here travelling on this arc of a circle. We know that it's travelling at 7 kilometres a second. We've got our rocket which is here, which is going to travel vertically, and the two of them need to meet at that point there. So what we know is that distance over speed equals time, so time is equal to distance divided by speed. Distance divided by speed. So the time is equal to, for the satellite it's going to be the arc length A divided by the velocity of the satellite, let's call that V1, and that has to equal the distance H, which is the height the rocket has to travel, divided by, let's call it V2. So that means that we can say that the arc length A is equal to V1H over V2. Now, we know that the length of an arc, A, is equal to the radius times the angle. And let's just zoom down to the bottom of the Earth, which is down there. The angle we're looking for is alpha here. What we can say is that alpha is equal to A over, and it's the total radius, so that's going to be r, the radius of the Earth, plus h, the height that we're travelling at. So alpha is equal to v1 h over v2 brackets r plus h. If we know this angle and we know this length, we can calculate this distance x, which is going to be the total radius times the sine of alpha. And we also know the distance from the centre of the Earth to this point here, which is the total radius times the cosine of alpha, which means we can find y, which is that distance minus the radius of the Earth. So let's do that on a spreadsheet. So we know that h is equal to 408 kilometers. We know that r is equal to 6,371 kilometers. We know that the velocity of the space station is 7 kilometers per second. And we know that the rocket velocity is equal to 11 kilometers per second which means that the arc length, A, is equal to V1 times H divided by V2. So 259, let's just have a quick look. That distance is 400, this distance is 259. That seems okay to me, so we'll continue. Now, the angle at the centre of the Earth, alpha, is equal to this distance divided by the total radius, which is going to equal this distance divided by the radius of the Earth plus the altitude of the International Space Station, and that's in radians. So now let's calculate x. x is equal to the total radius, so that's equal to the radius of the Earth plus the altitude of the International Space Station times the sine of alpha. And that's 259.5, 259.6. So that means that this straight line is very close to that arc, much closer than this diagram, it has to be said. Now let's calculate y. y is equal to, and it's going to be a similar calculation, so it's equal to the total radius, which is the radius of the Earth plus the altitude, times, this time it's the cosine of alpha, and that gives us the distance from the centre of the Earth to this point here. So we now need to subtract the radius of the Earth to get the distance y. So the radius of the Earth. And that gives the distance y, which is 403. So we're within five kilometers of the, uh, of the meeting point. Now, if we look at this triangle here, we know y and we know x, but x is perpendicular to that radius. 
and the horizontal is perpendicular to the radius at that point. So the angle theta that we're looking for here is the same as this angle here. And this angle is the arctangent of y over x, the opposite over the adjacent. So we can say that alpha is equal to, and we're going to use a function called a tan 2, and that wants the x value, which is there, and then it wants the y value, which is there, and we get our angle alpha, which is in radians. Now the question says that it wants the answer in degrees, so we take this value, we we'll multiply it by 180 and we divide that by pi and that gives us an angle of 57.2. Now as a quick sanity check, just put your arm out horizontally and then lift it about 60 degrees. And if you feel that that seems reasonable, then let's go with that answer. I think that seems reasonable, so I propose we go with that answer. We'll put that into baseline, which is 57.22 degrees. Are we right? Yes, we are. And that's the end of the examples on simultaneous equations.